We're now going to show you how to do session management. As the same with the password management, for session management we require some kind of account. We have now created a second account on our demo Linux system. It's called Safeguard2. And we're going to use this account to be handled by Safeguard to allow you session access to Linux via SSH. Go to the settings and it is pretty much the same approach as with the password management. Create a new entitlement. Okay, now we have created our second entitlement. And you can see we have a different priority. To be able to use this as part of our access request policy, we have to have an account and an asset. The asset is already there. It is our Linux system. It is this one here. And we do not have an account for this local account we have just created on our Linux box. So we have to add the, the account first. Same one again. Go to the asset. And the account name is Safeguard2. We just want to have just session request for this account. And an account. Set the password. Check it if you want. Okay, looks great. So let's go back to our entitlements and do the additional configuration. As you see, we have our entitlement here. We have no users, no accounts, and no assets. So, first off again, select the users. This is valid for. I just use my two users I have here. Go to the access request policy and create the access request policy for this. Okay, now this is the access type is SSH because it's a session. Go to next, click on the, uh, click on the scope, add the account we want to manage. Uh, it is safer too. Go to next. Reasons. We just leave it here by, by default. We just do anything special. Maybe you want to change the duration here to 30 minutes. Just to give you a different example. We have no approvers. No reviewers. And of course we want to change the password after checking in. We want to terminate the sessions if they are expired. So that can be a little bit dangerous if you're working, so maybe your session gets killed. And we don't have simultaneous access, and we don't have asset-based session access here. So next. This is a feature we provide with Safeguard. We are, we are able to record sessions like a video stream. We just switch this off for a moment. And uh, we have command detection feature. We're going to talk about this later. And we have a little bit more for SSH. We can allow SF. SFTP as for file transfer, uh, SCP as additional protocol using SSH. You can leave this checked or unchecked as you want. However, it should match your security policy. And access uh, time restriction, we just skip this here and we have no emergency access. So we now have created our access policy, we have our users, we have, we have our account and we have our asset. So it should work. Let's try it out. So let's test our configuration. Click on new request. The asset is still the same, it's just the, this one. Of course it's part of two entitlements. And we now see two accounts. We have safeguard1 for the password request and we have this safeguard2 for the session request. We're going to select safeguard2 and it tells us it will be an SSH session only. That's what we wanted. And we have all these details as from the password management. And now you see the checkout duration is defaulted by 2 to 30 minutes. That's the value here we have just adjusted. You can assign a command to it if you want. You, it's not required in this case. So just click on submit request. And as expected, it will line up here in our list of open requests. If you click here, you see additional information. You see the hostname connection string and you see the, the password. If you click on the little I here, show, SafeGuard will come up with that string. And that string is something you use to pass the proxy. So it's a token and it's your account and it's your the, the end system you want to reach. And this is the internal interface of the SafeGuard box. You, you don't have to know all the exact technical background. Just use this as your user string or use this as a username. And if you are using the Windows client, you have this little triangle over there where you can launch the SSH client directly. So just click on here. Safeguard now will launch PuTTY and it will directly take you to that end system, to your asset, with that username. And the username is the connection string we have just showed you. And it will be automatically sign you in. 
Just important thing to know, you don't have access to the password because the password is injected by Safeguard in the session stream and it will never be shown to the user. So this is a very nice feature. So if you end in, just log out, check in your request and that's it. We have defined two entitlements in our de demonstration, one for password and one for session management. And each of the entitlements has only one account. So how do you now change your entitlements or your definitions that you may have one account able to be used for a password and the session request? It's easy. Just go to the settings and go to entitlements. So you have entitlement one. This is our password release. If you go to the access request policy that is tied to this, you're going to see that you have the safeguard one account in it. And this safeguard one account, we want to have it also in the session entitlement. It's very easy. Go to the session entitlement, go to the access request policy, go to the scope, and you see it is only valid for safeguard 2. If you want to enable safeguard 1 to be used for sessions, just go on plus, add account, select safeguard 1, go to OK, and press OK. Now, if you go to general, you see that you have two accounts in this entitlement. So if you go back now here, do a request on that asset, you now see you can select safeguard 1 and 2 as, as, as prior. If you go to safeguard 2, this will be an SSH session. Of course, it was the session only entitlement. If you request safeguard 1, you're going to see now both possible ways. That's easy. Just change the entitlement.